and everything like that there. So very excited. And it just came out today, right? Um, actually, I think it's not until next week, but it's in pre-order. Okay. This is fine. It. The pre-orders are good. Great. Yeah. Yes. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Back by popular demand is Felicia Slattery, but this time with a new book. We thought it would be out today. It's possible it might not be out till next week, but you can pre-order. It's Plant-Based Instant Pot Cookbook. And uh, uh, look at how yummy. This is the coolest thing. Felicia was so kind. She actually let me choose the recipe she's going to make. And they sound amazing. She's going to be making a turmeric spice dish with cabbage and potatoes and carrots. But she's also going to be making a cake. A lot of you guys don't know. You can you can like bake in the Instant Pot. And I've actually never seen it. So I'm so excited to see this apple pie spice cake. Please welcome back the lovely Felicia Slattery. Thank you so much. And congratulations on another book. That's like two during the pandemic. Thanks, Chef AJ. I know. What did you do during the pandemic? Oh, I don't know. I wrote two books. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> I did so much cooking. Well, a lot of people cooked, right, during the pandemic. I just wrote down what I did. <laughs> Kept so it pretty simple. So, so yeah, I, um, you know, we were saying before we went live, like, a lot of people don't know you can bake in the Instant Pot, and it's really a fantastic tool for that. So, um, I thought I'd start with dessert because, you know, why not start with dessert? And I am going to, I've got my mise en place together here. So I thought I would just kind of get started with that. So if that's okay with you, we're going to just jump right in. So I am going to start with uh, making two flax eggs. So I've got two tablespoons of just a ground flax seed, and I am going to add five tablespoons of water. And I'm just going to let it sit off to the side. So for folks who've never cooked with, um, you know, never tried substituting eggs, that's two. Hang on. I can't count and talk at the same time. Here's three. <laughs> here's four. And here's five. So if you've never tried this before, the first time I tried this, I was like, that is not, that is going to be weird. And it's interesting the way the ground flaxseed absorbs the water it gets that viscosity like eggs, which is fantastic. So this is a very common popular substitute for eggs. Right now it doesn't look like anything. It just looks like, you know, ground flaxseed and water, but we're gonna just set that off to the side while we do some other stuff. And like in the magic of just a few minutes, it's gonna turn into perfect viscous stickingness <laughs> ingredient. So. All right. I think the first person is that figured out flax eggs and aquafaba and all these wonderful things that we do at plant based. I don't know. I don't. I mean, I think some really creative people is really the answer to that. I mean, you know, like, and and now you can buy things that say egg replacer and they're like a powdered thing. And you know, there's there's other kinds of things that you can buy. But I'll tell you, this is like I try to stick with this whole food plant based as possible and use the original thing as close, you know, as close as I can as possible. So and I think, you know, back in when people were starting to be creative with with eating a vegan plant based diet back in the day, it was called vegan. I watched a whole I just watched a documentary several years old now, but um, on the history of the word vegan. And it initially was all about diet only. It was all about diet, the guy who coined it. And I was like, oh, fascinating. So anyway, so those folks, and that was back in the fifties, like late forties, fifties, they certainly didn't have the manufactured stuff that we have available today. So they were like, all right, what can I do to make this be what I need it to be? So, all right. So we've got our flax eggs working. And the next thing I'm going to do is um, the recipe calls for three apples. So I've already um, peeled, diced, and poured two of the apples. And I'm just going to pop them into a bowl here. And I've got one more apple I thought I'd do, we could do together. I love and that you mentioned that you did your mise en place because I think that's so important. Anytime you make any recipe, it would make it so much easier for everyone to understand that. Yeah. So mise en place is is a classic step in all cooking. I mean, people who are chefs, this is one of the things that chefs learn to do is the mise en place. And it's just French. It stands for put in place. Uh, of course, French culinary technique. So I'm so bummed. Like my apple, my apple is not peeling properly. It's only it's not cooperating. Anyway, so mise en place basically means you measure everything out in advance and you just put it in little bowls and get it ready to go. 
So that way you're not kind of running all over the kitchen. Where's this? Where's that? Where's the other thing? And, um, you know, a lot of times being a home cook, I, I don't always do a mise en place, but when I'm doing a demo, it's just way easier to get everything out, get everything measured. And that way I'm not working on it while I'm trying to talk and teach and cook all at the same time. So, all right. So I just peeled that. I'm just cutting out the cords, cutting it at an angle, the apple. And really, you could use any apples for this. It doesn't matter. Whatever apples you like. You could do a combo of apples if you want. Um, I think today, these are these are Fuji's. I, I think I used today. Um, Fuji and Pink Lady were both on sale this weekend, so I'm not sure what I grabbed out of there. But it, literally any apple will work. If you like a little tartar, you can use... You can use a Granny Smith apple. That's fine. But whatever, whatever apples you like, you want a little bit sweeter, Fuji or a Honeycrisp would be great in here. You just want to be careful when you buy the Honeycrisp because sometimes Honeycrisp apples are ginormous, at least at my store. And so you don't want to have, you, you're looking for medium size apples is what you're looking for. So if they're, if your apples are ginormous, maybe you only need two or one and a half, just depending. So, all right. So there's my apples. And I have a pumpkin, not pumpkin, apple pie spice mix that I made up um, in advance today. It's cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, cardamom, and allspice. And I just mixed it together. And it, the smell is so fragrant because I grind my allspice and cardamom to, to use to, when I'm using it. And I just use a, a coffee grinder that I save specifically for spice grinder because you do, once you use a coffee grinder for spices, don't ever use it for coffee <laughs> because <laughs> you will be very sad with your cup of coffee because it will taste very funky. So I'm going to just sprinkle one and two teaspoons on my apples and then one tablespoon of maple syrup. You could also use, Chef AJ, I know you're a fan of date syrup. I love date syrup, yeah. You can absolutely use date syrup. In fact, I have a recipe for date syrup in my first cookbook, which we talked about when I was here the first time. Um, and in fact, since then, I've actually started making date syrup in the Instant Pot. Oh, that's cool. Super fast and easy in there. So anyway, I, um, but for today, I'm using maple syrup because that's how it's written in the book. So that's where I'm sticking with uh, my uh, the publisher for this book. Actually, I'm going to use this. The publisher for this book, they when they approached me, they said we want everyday, easy to find ingredients. And so I thought, well, most people don't know date syrup. You can't really buy date syrup in the I, store. I understand. It's, you know, so I said, all right, well, maple syrup's a good, you know, a good, very easily accessible ingredient. So, all right, so there's my apples with my, oh my gosh, heavenly aroma of the spice and a little bit of sweetener on there. And I am just going to set that right out of the way here. And then the next thing I'm going to do is my dry ingredients. So I have a cup of oat flour. Now, listen, don't go to the store and buy oat flour. That's just silly. Buy yourself a nice big tub of old fashioned oats. If you need them to be gluten free, because that's what the, the that's what you need for your body. Great. Buy the buy the gluten free ones and then just grind them up in the blender. Look, my, almost I almost hit it with my finger. There it is right there. My blender. So just grind them up in the blender and then measure it. Measure a cup after you've ground your oats. It's pretty close to a cup of old fashioned oats will equal just about a cup. You might have to like kind of round your oats, but you'll get there. So, all right. So it's just a cup of oat flour. It's so much cheaper when you just do it yourself anyway. It's just ridiculous to me to buy oat flour and vanilla flour. If you don't mind, I have to ring the bell because I just got a wonderful super chat donation from Diane. So thank you, Diane. You have my lucky charm today, Felicia. Yay. All right. So the next thing I have is uh, this is a gluten-free flour blend. So that was another thing that my publisher asked me to do. They said, try to make as many recipes gluten-free as, as you can. No problem. So I, I used to eat gluten-free exclusively for several years. So that's super easy. And this is another thing that I make myself. I actually grind. This is um, my recipe for my gluten-free flour blend is a cup of brown rice flour. And I just take brown rice and I throw it in my blender and I grind it up to into flour, a cup of white rice flour, same thing. And then I do buy um, a half a cup of tapioca, either powder or starch, depends on where you, your flour or starch, 
and then a half a cup of potato starch. So those two I do buy, but the rice flours, again, rice is so cheap. Like you don't have to buy the thing that says rice flour. So that's my, that's my gluten-free flour blend. If you, if, if you're not gluten-free now, I haven't tried it, so I can't guarantee, but you probably would be all right with like a whole wheat, a white whole wheat, um, flour in here. You would probably be okay with that. I don't know for sure. Um, but all right. So there's my flour blend. I've got two teaspoons of baking powder. We want to give it a little bit of rise and then a half a teaspoon of salt. Now I know we don't, we won't, we try to avoid salt. This is a half a teaspoon in the whole thing. Now, Chef AJ, you were, you were a pastry chef for a long time. Yeah, it was for about five years in LA. So what does salt do in baking goods? You know, I didn't put it in. <laughs> no, but it does something. I mean, because that, that was known for SOS free. I, I'm, I'll, I'll Google it. I don't know because I never used it. I do know, though, that like when you put things like baking powder or baking soda and mix them with uh, vinegar, it does rise. I don't know how it does that, but that does some kind of chemical thing. Okay. Yeah. So salt does something in the baking goods. And I'll tell you, with as many little substitutions as I came up with, I was like, you know what? half a teaspoon I'm going to put in there. It'll be okay. If you're totally avoiding salt, don't put it in there. I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, and then I just added the rest of that spice blend um, that I had made my apple spice blend and uh, apple pie spice blend and put it in here. Gosh, the aroma is just incredible. So, all right. And then the last thing that we're going to mix together are the liquid ingredients. And I have, I need a half a cup of my maple syrup. So I am just going to put it, I've got a two cup measure here. And that's what I'm going to measure it straight into is my two cup measure. And I need to have Okay, I, I, I got your answer, Felicia. Oh, good. Okay, the what is it? of salt in cake recipes is to enhance the flavor of the other ingredients. The presence perks up the depth and complexity of other flavors as the ingredients melt. Salt also provides a balance to the sweetness of cake batters, but a salty flavor should not I don't, be discernible. It has several functions. It modifies flavor, increases crust color, and controls the rate of yeast fermentation and enzyme activity. Also strengthens gluten, making it more cohesive and less sticky. There you go. Cool. So we don't need it because <laughs> <laughs> there's no gluten in this. So we don't need to do that. Um, so that's funny. All right. So I've got my, I've got a cup of applesauce which by the way, you can make applesauce right in your Instant Pot. Super easy, super delicious. I have a recipe for applesauce in the book. And so I've got a half cup of maple syrup. I've got a cup of applesauce and I'm going to add a teaspoon of vanilla. Have and you tried vanilla powder yet? That's my favorite. I have not. Is it it's expensive though? So the publisher probably wouldn't want it. Yeah, they, they were very clear. Like we want everything to be very accessible. In fact, some of the people, the early reviews that we've had come in, people are like, oh my gosh, thank you for making the ingredients easy to find and normal, regular ingredients. Like, well, I, I learned that the hard way with my first book by putting in tomato powder, like nobody could find it, but it's becoming more accessible now. I have never had that either. Oh, it's so All right. Good. So here's my flax eggs. So they're, they're viscous and totally like eggs, eggs, except they're healthier, like way a lot healthier. All right. So there's that. I'm just going to use my whisk here. I'm not going to go crazy because I don't want wet ingredients all over the kitchen. So there's that. All right. And then I am just going to pour the wet into the dry. Pretty classic wet into the dry. And I'm going to use just a little wooden spoon here to stir everything together. And, you know, even though there's no gluten in here to get uh, extra firm, I still don't like to overmix my dry and my wet. So you just really want to get it so that your dry ingredients are no longer dry and everything is incorporated. You may start to notice that baking powder starts to react a little bit and um, it even starts to get not quite foamy, but it's just an interesting texture that you could kind of see right away. So, all right. So we just got a pretty basic cake batter here. That's it right there, very simple. And now this is where this is where we're gonna talk about a little bit of extra fun magic. So you can bake in your Instant Pot. Now Instant, Instant Pot, and there's a bunch of other companies that sell accessories and um, you can buy a package or a set of nonstick six inch um, baking pans. This set came with 
this cute little, I, I like to make my apple spice cake in this one, um, this cute little bunt pan. And then they also have, they have that a cheesecake um, spring form pan they had in this little set and a couple other little, a um, couple of little, these are just so, so cute. Um, and it fits right into the Instant Pot, it just fits perfectly right in there. And so, but let's say you don't have this, right? That's fine. I'm actually going to make it today just to show you. This is just a regular corningware that I got when we were, when my husband and I got married, you know, when you register for all the things. So when we registered for the things, this was one of the sets. There was like, this came with this one and a bigger one. So you don't have to get special stuff. Whatever you have that would work as a cake pan that would fit into your Instant Pot. And I'm being careful because this is breakable. So that's it. Like, that's all you need to do. Now, if you want to spray this, you can feel free to spray it. I'm not going to spray it today. I feel like it's fine. So the way that we do this is we're going to put half of the batter. So just kind of by eye, look at half of your batter and put it into the bottom. It's probably a little more than half. All right, there we go. So half the batter goes in the bottom. And then we are going to top it with half of the apples. So the apples are like you have a nice layer of apples right in the middle of the cake. It's so good. All right. So half of the apples. Let's use this. And again, you're just eyeballing this. You don't have to measure. It's fine. But I like if I'm gonna if I'm gonna err on the side of a little bit more one way and a little bit less the other, I put a little bit more in the middle and a little bit less on top. So all right, there's the apples. And I just kind of push them into the batter just a little bit. I'm not squishing it down, just tapping them on. And then we're going to finish up with the rest of the batter. So. Got to thank Angela. Super chat. Thank you so much. You hey, keep going. I love I the keep super it. chats. That's <laughs> awesome. Yay. So the batter goes in and I'm just going to do my best to kind of smoosh it around. It's not, it's, it's a thick batter. It's not very runny. So, um, you know, you just do your best to kind of push it to the edges. A little bit fell on the board there and we'll put it in. All right. So push it to the edges. There we go. And then finish off with the rest of your apples. Which smell divine. Oh my gosh, so good. I love this cake. It's so fun. It's my Aunt Jenny good. used to make this. My mom's, my mom's great aunt. So she was my great, great aunt in the book. They took out one of the greats. Anyway, my great, great aunt used to make this apple cake and they, my mom used to make it on special occasions. So, all right. So there's the cake with the batter. Last couple of things that you need to know is you want to, now you're going to cover this with foil. The reason you're covering this with foil is because you don't want the cake to get wet. And you're gonna see why it, how it can get wet here in a second. So you're covering it tightly with foil. All right. And then you're gonna put, just double checking my recipes. You're gonna put a cup and a half of water in the bottom. And actually, I'm not going to pour this in here because I've already got one that I baked and I'm going to use this for my next recipe. So just pretend I'm pouring the water in. Okay. Pretending. And then your Instant Pot came with this trivet. All the Instant Pots come with this little trivety thing. And I remember when I got it, I was like, well, I'm never going to use that thing. Ha! I use it all the time. So just to make life easier for yourself, I put my cake pan. Again, try to get that foil on there as tightly as possible. And then I just put it right in there. And if the foil comes up, make it tight. Okay. And then you turn on your Instant Pot. And again, I'm not going to do it right now because I already have one, but you turn on your pot, you set it to um, sealing, not venting. So you want it to be sealed and you are going to pressure cook it for 55 minutes. And what happens is the water heats up and it creates a wonderful moist environment, a moist, hot environment. And that's what bakes the cake. It's super cool. So I am just going to take this out of the way. We're going to pretend that that's baking right now. And then we are going to make 
our dinner or lunch or whatever you want to call it. So I am a busy mom. I have, I have two daughters and I'm just looking for places to stash stuff. <laughs> I have two daughters. Um, one just started her junior year in high school and the other one is about ready to start her sophomore year in college. And I'll tell you, you know, back when they were not that many years ago, a couple years ago, when I was carting them everywhere, I was like, I needed something fast to make for dinner on the weekdays. Like really, that was healthy and easy and everything. And I have to confess. Now I know you, how many, how many instant pots do you have in your house, Chef AJ? Oh gosh, I'm down to that's too embarrassing. An embarrassing question. Okay, so <laughs> I have four now. Because <laughs> I'm giving it's I, gave one, I gave one to Chef Bravo and I gave one to a neighbor. I have four. I have the three quart, I have the eight quart. I have actually have the eight quart with the air fryer thing. And then I do have one from Melty. So another eight quart. I love the eight quart. What's your favorite size? Well, I just have the six quart duo or the six, maybe it's seven quart. Um, but it's just the instant pot duo. It's actually the duo is the most popular brand on the, uh, of the like most popular model of the instant pot. But I have seen those cute little three quart ones. And then I've seen the bigger ones. And I was like, maybe I do need to have more. I love the three quart. I use that every day to cook my husband's grains. I do love the three quart too. And it's, it's adorable and it doesn't take up much space. So there's a recipe in here for gingered collard greens. I live in the South. I live in Knoxville, Tennessee and collard greens are a staple down this way. And I have a friend who um, he has passed several years ago, but he had a restaurant and he had studied and worked in Japan. And when he was in Japan and he was, he was from Atlanta, he was from the South. And so he combined this fusion of Southern and Japanese cooking. And so the, the gingered collards was his idea. Like we, I would go into his restaurant. I was like, what is in these collard greens? Cause it is not normal, like typical collard green flavor. He was like, it's ginger. I was like, Oh, ginger. So if, and if you have people in your life who aren't so sure about collard greens, maybe even yourself, try the gingered collard greens because they are delicious. So, all right. So we're going to make this. this that is that was one of the recipes when I was earmarking them that I wanted to try actually the ginger collard. You're going to love it. It's, that's, it's really good. It's one of my, it's honestly, it's one of my favorites. I make them, I probably make them at least once a week, if not more than that because they're so good. And my kids who don't like collard greens, they ask for that one. So it's awesome. All right. So this recipe honestly could not be any easier or faster. Um, really the hardest part is like chopping your, chopping your veg and getting it in the pot. So, all right. I am going to chop my onion and I just chop off the blossom and the stem end and in they go. I have a, I have a, I call it my veggie broth bowl. So any, all, any of my odds and ends, I just throw them in a little bowl. I throw them in the freezer. And then I, uh, when I've got a full bag or I run out of broth, I will make my veggie broth out of scraps. So I've got a video on my channel for that. My channel's plant-based home cooking. So go check that out if you haven't been over there. And my eyes are starting to go from the onions. You gotta love that. <laughs> But um, this onion is you know, just one onion. And actually, there's no garlic in this recipe. So this recipe is uh, was inspired by a West African recipe, actually. Pretty popular West African recipe. And I um, and I and I, I was like, wow, this is this couldn't be simpler. And also, I thought, well, if you changed out the seasonings, you could really have like any kind of cuisine. So in the book, I mentioned, you know, if you're feeling a little bit Italian instead of a little bit West African, you can go with, um, you can put garlic powder and Italian seasoning in here instead of the, instead of the seasonings that we're going to put in today and have a little bit of a different flavor. So, all right. So first thing I'm going to do one, another thing that I love about the instant pot is you can saute first in it and then you can just turn off the saute and turn on the pressure mode. So that's what we're gonna do. In fact, a good number of the recipes in this book have that. So that's the pot. And you know, when I first got my Instant Pot, I was super intimidated, I'm not gonna lie. Like there's a lot of buttons on this thing. 
And the first couple of times that I used it, I burned rice. Let me burn rice. Anyway, I burned rice. It was terrible. And I was like, this is the stupidest thing ever. I threw it in the back of the closet. And then I saw all my friends using it. And I was like, all right, I'll try it again. And I tried it again and I couldn't get the lid on. It took me forever to get the lid on. And I was like, this is the stupidest thing ever. Back in the closet, it went. And then I needed, and then one day came along and I like, it was one of these days where I was running the kids here and there and everywhere. And I needed to, I needed to get them somewhere and I needed dinner. And I was like, all right, I'm going to try this thing again. And all the stars aligned and it just worked out perfectly and it was easy and fast. And I was like, wait, I should use this thing more often. So here we are. All right. So now I am just going to break down. These are three um, fairly large carrots. And, you know, this is like, this is the whole meal. It's carrots, potatoes, onion, and cabbage. Like, that's it. But guess what? It's everything you need. If you want to add some beans, if you're feeling like, you know, you could go for a little extra, a little extra bulk and fiber, like, cool, throw in a can of of chickpeas if you want. Um, And you can even do that at the end after they're, because, right, they're already cooked in the can. So you just throw them in, eat them up like that. If you want to throw in some beans, awesome. But I mean, this has the greens. It has the potatoes. We love our potatoes, don't we, Chef AJ? I love oh, potatoes. you bet. Now, Nadine is asking your butcher block. I don't like that word, but your cutting board, we'll call it, is beautiful. What kind is it? Um, this was custom made for me. My husband got me this for Valentine's Day this year. It's beautiful. One of his clients is a woodworker. So um, he had his client, he custom made and designed it because I had seen butcher, we'll call it cutting boards like this before. And I was like, honey, isn't that cute? And I just mentioned it like in passing. And and then he came home with this. He was like, happy Valentine's day. I was like, what? So I have a very supportive, very sweet husband. All right. So I've also got three or... Yes, I've got three potatoes here. And listen, this is such a versatile, easy recipe. I'm cutting them into about one inch chunks. And, um, you know, if you're feeding more people, add more carrots and more potatoes. Like it couldn't be simpler. So my onions are starting to go. You hear them in the in the instant pot. No oil, of course. Right. Because why would there be? And, you know, that was another thing when I was learning the whole whole food plant-based way of cooking. I didn't believe you could cook without oil. And turns out I was super wrong, which is great because even in the Instant Pot at the bottom, it's a stainless steel pot. And all I did was throw in the onions and that's it. So it's just the onions in the bottom of here. If I, sometimes I keep a little bit of water, you know, handy in case they start to get a stick a little bit but they're not, they're, they're not sticking at all. The liquid comes right out of the onions that's in them. And that's really all you need. So I've got my potatoes here. I've got my carrots here. I'm waiting for them. And I'm just, so the only thing I didn't have out and ready was my ginger because I love the smell of ginger because I keep my ginger in the freezer and it Me makes too. it really easy to prep. And I don't even have to peel it because the, the, the peel just kind of comes off as you're using it on the, on the little micro great grater there. So my onions are looking pretty good. We're just looking for them to be a little bit translucent. That's what we're going for, you know, for them to change that color a little bit. So while I'm waiting for them to do what they're going to do, I am going to just grate about an inch of this knob of ginger here. And I, like I said, I just keep it in the freezer. It grates up super easy. It's like ginger snow. So good. And as soon as it hits the pot, you get this beautiful aroma of the ginger, which is just amazing. You know, if you don't have fresh ginger and you've got ground ginger in, the, in your spice cabinet, you could certainly substitute that, no problem at all. But this is something, this is one of those ingredients that I always have. Now, if you buy ginger and you put it in your fridge, it doesn't stay in the fridge very long. It goes bad and gets moldy and weird and funky. But if you throw it in the freezer, it'll last forever. So that's what I do. As soon as I get home from the store, I peel it and I cut it into the chunk size I usually use. And, and I'm so excited, Felicia, I just checked the recipe for the ginger collards. I have all the ingredients. I'm going to make it for dinner tonight. That's all. That's, you know, that's a really smart way to do it. I'm super lazy and don't, (laughs) so I just throw my stuff as it is. 
All right, so that's about a, that's a, that's about an, an inch or so of that ginger. And then in my little spice bowl here, I've done my mise en place. I have a teaspoon of ground cumin. I have a teaspoon of paprika and I have a half a teaspoon of turmeric. And I am just gonna drop these in and we're gonna let the spices bloom. So as soon as the spices touch that heat, you get the smell of them. And we're just releasing the natural oils that are inside those spices. So in this case, we're not adding oil because there's oils naturally occurring in the spices. So now it's gonna to start to stick and look a little funky and that's okay. Because the next thing I'm gonna do is turn off. So I'm gonna push cancel. And I turned off the saute mode and I am going to add my carrots right now. Oh, that spice blend smells so good. And my potatoes. So all of this goes straight in. That paprika is strong. If you wanted to use smoked paprika for this, that would give it a really nice smoky flavor. All right, and then I have a cup of water. And so I am looking to make sure this is the right one. Yes, it is. So um, I'm just gonna put a cup of water in the bottom. If you wanted to use broth, you could use broth. Why I didn't in this recipe, here's why. So the publisher wanted me to make sure the recipes didn't have any more than 10 ingredients. And here's, this is funny. Water, salt, pepper, and oil don't count as ingredients. I'm like, well, okay, but we're not using salt or oil. So, um, so if you wanted to use broth in this, you absolutely could use broth. I honestly don't think it needs it because there's enough seasoning, uh, enough of the seasoning blend. And we're not at, it's not like we're adding a ton of water into this. It's only a cup. So I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm, uh, I'm scraping the bottom of my instant pot just to make sure that there's no onions that have stuck to the bottom and get all those spices kind of off and mixed up and in. And so I've got my onion, my um, ginger, all my spices, my carrots, and my potatoes. They're all in there. And the last thing we're gonna add is some cabbage. And I'm gonna use a half a head of this cabbage. Again, if you're feeding more people, add more food, right? Just add more carrots, add more, uh, add more potatoes. I'm just gonna cut the core out. So really simple. Cut out the core that goes in the veggie broth bowl because that ad adds nice flavor to the veggie broth. And then I just slice this up. Now, here's another tip. When you're cooking with greens in the Instant Pot and you're cooking them with other ingredients, you're not just making greens like the, the ginger and collard greens we were talking about. You don't want to mix them in. Just put them on top. And then that makes them not get, they don't get super smooshy. So you just put them on top. We're not going to stir anything in. And I'm just doing kind of a quick chop because, you know, cabbage will, will wilt down. And that's it. So there's my cabbage right on top. And you can see now it's starting to approach the top. And then that's it. Boom. Super easy and fun. So I'm going to make sure my, uh, my little pot is on ceiling. There it is. And I'm going to set this. It's always shocking to me. Two minutes. Like two minutes is all it takes because we cut the, we cut the carrots and the potatoes down small enough that we'll be able to do that. So it takes a little bit for your Instant Pot to come up to pressure, but with as little water as is in here, it probably will take about five minutes or so. So that beep is telling us from the Instant Pot that the, um, that it's on and it actually says on. And so right now it just, it reads the word on. And then as soon as it comes to pressure, it'll beep again. And then you'll see the time, whatever time that you, that you set to that. And so in this case, we set it to two minutes, which gives us enough time to go back and revisit dessert. Oh, yes. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So here is my cake from earlier that I had made and the apples still look beautiful. So yummy. And I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that it comes out of this. And I thought, you know what, instead of doing it ahead of time, 
I'll let everybody hold your breath with me and see if we all can see if it comes out together. So I'm going to place my, my plate on top. And then I'm going to pray that this comes out. It's not wanting to come out. There it is. And out it came. And there, look it. That so is nonstick. Beautiful. Wow. So good. Those apples are delicious with the apple pie spice. So look how pretty that is. And so you've got a nice layer of the apples. I'll show you over here. The apples are on the bottom. They're all kind of mixed in. And I am going to grab my, I have a knife somewhere. Oh, there it is. I have this knife. And so it's super moist. Like you're not getting a fluffy, this is not, you're not going to get a fluffy, like you baked it in the oven kind of a cake. This is, mu this is much more dense and super moist cake but it is just so good. And it's, and it, and because of that, it feels very rich, but I mean, there's nothing in it to make it, you know, not good for you. Uh -huh. And so I am just going to, I mean, it's, it's apples, it's oats. Look at that. Yum. And if you want to flip it back over again to put the, the pretty apples on top, you absolutely can do that. All right. So, but you can see the crumb is, let me turn it to this side. You can see the crumb is very dense um, and, and it's super moist. So let me take a taste and see how it is. Cause why not have dessert first, right? Mm. Yeah, that's what I wrote in on process. Life is this uncertain, have dessert first. Oh my gosh. It looks so beautiful. It's delicious. It is really good. And that cardamom and allspice is coming through in the apple spice blend, apple pie spice blend. It's just really, really nice. So it's, um, I would say if, if we're talking about texture, I would put it almost closer to like a cheesecake, like the density of a cheesecake than of a, of a more traditional, you know, fluffy, cr crummy cake like that. So it's, it's just, it's really delightful. And, um, you know, you can make this cake a day or so in advance. I wouldn't make it much more than a day in advance because of it's so moist. It, it will turn, you know, and get kind of funny in a hurry. So I would make it no more than a day in advance. Mm. I think I have all the okay. ingredients for that one too. So <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll be looking from this book today. And guys, this is the book, Plant-Based Instant Pot Cookbook. I keep posting a link if you want to pre-order it. Mm -hmm. come out august 17th that's it so here's our cake which is fabulous i'm still waiting for my my timer there so we have a few minutes to chit chat if we I would have like any questions for felicia let's see cardam is a cart jesse says cardamom is a wonderful and underused spice that's how i feel about millet millet is underused and when people try it do you do any millet recipes there's two in this book yeah, there's um, millet is an interesting is an interesting grain because um, I cooked with it and I I don't remember what it was that I made, but I was like, this tastes funny. That's because millet will turn. So I have learned that when I buy millet, I'm just store it in my freezer. So kind of like nuts and other things, it, it gets a, it, it can turn it can get a little bit funny if you don't if you don't use it right away. So I bought it and I had it for a while, like months, because I, I don't know how I, how I cook. I walk through the grocery store and I go, Oh, that looks cool. I'm going to use that. And it goes in the cart. And then I get home and I'm like, what was I going to use this for? I don't know. And it just sits in the, pa in the pantry for a while. So that's what happened to my millet. And I was like, Oh, make sure your millet is fresh. So there's your tip on that. But yeah, so millet is exactly one of those um, ingredients, but this is, I think there, I have a dessert with millet in it. And I, uh, now that, now that we're talking about it, let me see what I got. So there's a, there's an index in the back, which is super handy. It's, it's so fun to work with a publisher. So this is my eighth book. I have actually written, um, I have two, I have a millet, a Mediterranean millet salad and I have a millet vanilla pudding. Ooh, and yum. so kind of like, a, it's, you know, like a rice pudding, but made with millet instead of rice. So, um, yeah, really, really nice. And that millet salad is, is good. It's I've had folks who, who had never had millet and they're like, what is in this? It's so good. And it's, yeah, you're right. It is a, a 
underused, uh, underused grain that it's just so easy. I mean, when I started to eat plant-based, it's like a whole world of food opened up. You know, a lot of people feel like, oh, I'm limiting myself. I can only, you know, I can't have this. I can't have that. I can't have, it's like all of a sudden you realize how limited you were well, for me, how limited I was in, in the plant kingdom that, you know, like, oh my gosh, there's so many things that I can enjoy now. And um, I mean, could have enjoyed it before. I just, you know, never was creative enough to figure it out or sought it out or looked for it. And there's just so many great things. I mean, like all the different kinds of lentils and, and all of the different kinds of grains, it's just, and all of the different kinds of like rice, even it's not just one rice, there's all the rices. So yeah, I absolutely love it. There's, I have a couple of compliments I want to read for you. Oh, where did they go? People love your apron and they feel like it's like Wilma Flintstone as a compliment. Cause I've been watching the Flintstones in order. Like that's our show. We pick a show every day. We watch one show. And I didn't realize there were 166 episodes of the Flintstones. We're on number seven, but I do love that apron. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> this was a gift from my sister-in-law. We do, well, um, you know, the people the- in your life give you really good gifts. I have, I have very supportive and loving family. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We, um, she was, she had been eating plant-based before me. And so when I started eating plant-based that, that year for Christmas, I asked for cookbooks and, um, you know, and other, and other things related to cooking. And so this apron came with, um, came with, uh, Mary Campbell's cookbook, which was one of my first plant-based cookbooks. So Mary Campbell, I don't know who that is. You do. D- uh, Dr. Colin Campbell's wife. That's Karen. It is. Hang on. I'm going to look. Who's Mary. There's Leanne Campbell, his daughter. Are there, is there a I'm sorry. I'm, I was wrong. You were right. Leanne. That's okay. it. It's like, who the hell? There's a hidden. It's Campbell. Mary. Oh, it's Mary McDougal. Right. Okay. That's, that's okay. Great. I was, that's who I was conflating in my brain. First name and last name. So yeah. So this was my very first one, China study cookbook. Um, and so just, and I, it just went on from there. So I've got my, all my cookbooks lined up there. Um, Melissa says, can you talk about the process of how you make date syrup in the instant pot? Yeah. Okay. Let me get my other book. Cause it's right here. So this is the first cookbook. This is a plant-based slow cooker cookbook, which by the way, if you have an instant pot, you have a slow cooker. There's a button on it that actually says slow cook. And I have, I got it right here. Let me grab it. I bought a special lid specifically for it actually says instant pot on there. I don't know if you could see it, but this is a lid that turns this into a slow cooker um, and it creates an ideal environment. It was about 20 bucks on Amazon, but um, you don't have to have this. You could just turn your lid to venting and it will, it'll vent and do what it needs to do. But um, when I mean, I did the cookbook, I wanted to really create the best possible environment. So I would have, I had three or four slow cookers going at a time, <laughs> including, including my instant pot one. So anyway, um, all right. So the date syrup, I have that in the back of this first one and it was, this is one of my bonus recipes that I called it because, um, it's not, it wasn't, it's not made in the slow cooker. All right. So it's a pound of dates. That's it. A pound of pitted dates to take the pits out. If there are, if they come pitted and four cups of water. And that's it. That's the only ingredients. Super easy. So what you do is you place that you, you, you have to soak the dates for a little while, um, about 20 minutes and it gets out any impurities or anything like that. Then you drain off the water. And then this recipe says in a medium saucepan. Well, one day when I needed to make date syrup in a hurry, I was like, I don't know, medium saucepan. I'm not doing that. So I, I put the dates and a cu- uh, four cups of water in the instant pot. And I want to say, let's see, how long did I say? For about an hour. So two hours. So what I did was I I used the pressure cooker for about 20 minutes or so. And I pressure cooked the dates with the four cups of water. And then I followed the rest of the recipe exactly the way it's written. So you let the mixture cool. Then you strain the dates. um, And you reserve the liquid. And then uh, I use a, I use a cheesecloth or actually I don't use cheesecloth. I use um, I use muslin, cotton muslin. So it's just a piece of 
of cotton, you, a tea towel is fine, whatever. But, um, and then I just, you drain it out. You try to get all the liquid out as possible, as much liquid as possible. And then you can put it right back into the instant pot and um, put it on saute. So it boils down and you boil it down until it becomes thicker. And as it, and then turn it off and then put it in the fridge, put it in, I always put it in. I have a, I have a, actually this, not this, but I have a glass, tall glass um, container that I use for my date syrup. And so as it cools, it actually will get, um, it gets thicker as it cools. So that's it. I mean, it's, it's very easy to do, but it's just involved. There's extra steps. So. People tell you you look like a famous actress. Um, yes, they do. They Who tell you, you you look like this one, Megan Mullaney. No, nobody's told me that one. I usually get the I usually get Nia Vardalos from my big fat Greek wedding. Oh. Yeah, that's the one I usually get, but I can see that too. Yeah. I, I mean, I just I, I think you look like Karen from Will and Grace. I do. I love like her sisters. Yeah, she's great. She is um, Megan Lamal Ali. Yeah, awesome. Jennifer says, did your great great aunt have a pressure cooker? Uh, did Aunt Jenny have a pressure cooker? I don't know. If she did, I never saw her use it. I had never seen anybody use a pressure cooker. I, and to my knowledge, I was the first person in my family to use a pressure cooker. And I had, I, in fact, I may have just recently gotten rid of it. Um, I had like somewhere between the super old school kind and the instant pot. I had probably bought it in the late nineties when I had bought my first condo and um, you know, it had a cook on the stove but it had some safety features to it. So it wasn't like the super old school kind where it would blow up. <laughs> um, but I very rarely used it. So yeah, no, Aunt Jenny did not, as to my knowledge, have a pressure cooker. She baked the bread or the cake. She baked it in the oven. And of course it was, I mean, she, hers had eggs and butter and, you know, stuff that we're not using. So this is not her in any way, shape or form her recipe, but it just, the flavor of it and the, and just the texture of the apples, just that's what takes me back to, remembering those days. So, yeah. Um, there's a question. Could you use any kind of potato or cabbage in this recipe? Yes. Um, I, so if you're using russet potatoes, I tend to peel russet potatoes. I don't love the, I don't love the skin of them in a recipe like this. So I would peel them, but I use red potatoes and gold potatoes interchangeably with this. You could try it with sweet potatoes. Again, I probably would peel the sweet potatoes, but it's up to you. Um, and then, yeah, you could, if you wanted to do it with Napa cabbage, you'll, you know, Napa cabbage would be fine um, or a red cabbage. I, I probably wouldn't use red cabbage only because red cabbage isn't pretty when it's cooked. It just kind of gets a, I don't know, it looks a little muddy. So, um, but if that's what you have in the house and you don't care what it looks like, <laughs> then absolutely. All right. So I got two minutes. It came to pressure. Ooh, that's so it took a little bit. You know, you have some really great recipes in this book. There's an oil-free marinara that looks fantastic. And you have a cheesecake recipe and a hot sauce recipe. Yeah, the hot sauce. So I call it burn your eyebrows off hot sauce in our family because, um, but you can make it at, to any heat you want. I just happen to, we have a, a really fantastic um I want, I want to call it an Asian market, but it has like from all over the place. Um, but it's a, it's a market that's um, got like, we'll call it an international market and they have really delicious, fresh produce that they get in a couple of few times a week. And um, they have these super hot Thai chilies and they're really tiny and, and red. And um, that's the, when I was shopping and cooking, I was like, well, that's what I'm going to use to make my hot sauce. Oh my God. They're so hot. It's so spicy. So, um, so just depending on how hot you like it. Although interestingly, I use that hot sauce when I make my um, buffalo cauliflower dip, which is one of my. It's in the. It's in the first cookbook, buffalo cauliflower dip, and I zhuzh it up with extra with that hot sauce that has no oil or salt. It's just vinegar. It's basically vinegar and peppers. There might be. It might be a little shot of water in there, but, uh, super easy, super simple. I mean, we got another celebrity look like Diane says you look like Julia Louis Dreyfus from Seinfeld too. Oh, thank you. I kind of dance like her too. <laughs> you do. You're kind of like, like a swish of all three of those people. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So I got one more minute left on this, which is great. Um, 
What was I going to say? I was going to say something. Oh, I got my hot sauce. So I'll show you what it looks like. I'm going to grab it. It's right here. I'll ask you a question. I'm not sure. Would, a, would an 11 inch diameter silicone bunt pan fit in the eight quart instant pot? I don't know. I think it might be too big, but it might be too big. And, and that's the thing. You don't want to stuff anything in. Um, you know, like if, if you stuff it in, then the cake is going to come out the way you stuffed it. That makes sense. It won't, you know, won't look really pretty. So, um, all right. So we've got our, our two minutes have passed. So our food has cooked now, obviously it was cooking the whole time. So that was, that's the thing. Like, so actually I have one or two recipes in, in the, um, in the instant pot cookbook, plant-based instant pot cookbook that have zero minutes cooking time. And the reason it's zero minutes cooking time is because of course, while the pot is coming up to temperature, it's, it's already boiling. It's already creating the steam and it's already cooking the food. So, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place a towel over my, um, over the nozzle here. And I'm going to release the steam like that. So I don't burn myself and, um, I don't send steam hitting the ceiling cause it's super high pressure in there. I'm going to click cancel on that tap cancel. And I'm going to grab my, my bowl so that I can get ready to taste. Cause there's nothing else we have to do to this. I've got, I'm going to add some pepper because I always love a little pepper with some stuff, but like, that's it. I mean, how fast was that? Right. Easy, fast, really fast. And it's just, uh, and healthy, nutritious. Like I said, if you want to feel like you want to add some beans to it, throw in a can of whatever your favorite beans are. That's fine. Um, I, I would rinse them and, but you know, that's what I do, but however you want to do it. So we're just waiting for our steam to finish. It's almost done now. All right. I always put the towel on right when I first let it come up. And then as it's starting to go down, but there was a lot of pressure in there just from that little one cup of water. It's really interesting to see. And so what we're waiting for, if you've not used an instant pot before, um, there is, when it comes up to pressure, you see that you can kind of see it, this little, um, it's called a float valve. This little silver thing pops up and that's the steam from inside pops the valve up. And once the steam is evaporated and it's just coming through the top here of the steam release valve, then this little float valve will sink. And once that sinks, then it, the pot will safely open. And that's like, that's the beauty of the, of the instant pot. It, and I'm like, I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that, but th what instant pot did when it came on the market in 2010 was it made, they made it safe for people to pressure cook and almost foolproof because this lid won't, will not open. It will not budge while that float valve is engaged. So, you know, I've had people who are friends say, oh, I don't know about that's like a pressure cooker, right? It's, isn't that dangerous? Like not at all, you know, so it's not going to blow up in my kitchen, not at all. So, um, because of all of the different safety features that they have included in the pot. So, all right, I hear it. So as the steam is stopping, I'm just waiting and the flip valve just dropped. So here we go. Just so you know, Leah and Mandy and Diane have ordered the book and Jennifer says she's getting it too. So thank you guys. It's a really good book. I'm not just saying that. I mean, I, 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 I wouldn't say that because there's a lot of things I'm going to make in here, the oil-free marinara. I endorsed it. So I could tell you something and there is no oil in the book, right? Somebody's saying it's low oil, but there, I can't find any oil in any of these recipes. If there is, I can't think of where there is. There's one recipe that I, um, that has actual sugar in it. And it came from the Forks Over Knives website. Like I used their like ingredient list mm -hmm. and, um, and I, and I use like organic cane sugar. Um, and that's, that's in the chocolate cake. And that was the only, that's the only sugar in the entire book is that. Yeah, I don't uh, see, I don't, I mean, I, I can get behind this. There's enough recipes here. And but there's plenty, exactly. Like everything else. In fact, that cheesecake. Now I know for, I mean, look know, at this, look at this one. Look at this lasagna. I almost told you to make that like a lasagna in a pizza pot. That's mind blowing. The, the lasagna is fantastic. I will say if you're going to make that lasagna, <laughs> Depending on the size of your pot, it doesn't make enough for a giant crowd of people. Like my, the three of us who ate it, we like, we finished it off and I had a big giant salad on the side. So just, but it is, 
Oh my gosh, it was so good. All right, so this is it. This is it. I'm just gonna. I'll put pepper on it on the plate. But I just kind of stir it up. You can see the cabbage has so wilted good. down. I mean, look how pretty it is. Anytime you put turmeric in anything, it ends up being beautiful, of course. So I mean, gosh, it's you can't get more simple and basic than carrots, potatoes, onions, and cabbage. You know what I'm saying? So, all right, a little pepper. I don't like a ton of pepper. Then I'll start sneezing and then it's not, it's not pretty. So a little bit of pepper is good. And the, I mean, I'm going to put my fork in this carrot. It's perfect. It like perfectly gives. And, you know, I don't like my veggies to be smushy. They're not smushy. If you like your veggies smushier, then just cook them a little longer. But this potato is fork tender. Look, it just cut right in half. So, all right, I'm going to Grab a, grab a little bit of everything here and I'm going to blow on it because it was just boiling a second ago, like literally. So I'm going to take a quick little, okay. Ooh, so good. It's super hot. I can't, I can't get over the color of the turmeric. It just makes everything so pretty. Mm. And turmeric's so good for you. Mm -hmm. That looks so good. Delicious. I'd probably throw some rice in there. I like, I like me some starch with my starch. <laughs> yeah. If you throw rice in, you need more liquid. So just know that. I mean, just like maybe even afterwards, I always have some rice. Oh, up. already cooked rice. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You could throw some rice in here. Um, you know, this would be good if you had lentils, like some lentils left over, throw some lentils with it. That would be really nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's so good. So really, I mean, like, again, couldn't be easier. Couldn't be simpler. That's one of the things that I really do like about this. Your um, recipes are really, I have both your books. Your recipes are delicious and they're easy. And that's what people need and want. To be yeah, able to it really is. I mean, it's just, and especially for people who might be newer to plant-based, some ingredients can be intimidating, you know? And so uh, the rule was People have to be able to find this at their local grocery store, no matter where they live in the, in the, in the, in the world. Like they need to be able to find the ingredients. I was like, all right, I can do that. So, and uh, that's what we did. So, all right, I'm going to take another bite because this is really good. And this is going to be dinner tonight for my family. You got apple cake for dessert. And we got apple cake for dessert. I know I have two apple cakes. Well, you can't go wrong. You can freeze one. I was just going to say you can freeze it and they freeze really nicely. So it's really, really easy. Here's a fun question. How did you enjoy the Cordon Bleu cooking school in Paris? Okay. So I'm going to tell you about that. So I went and studied abroad. So I was a, when I, I took four years of French in high school, along with four years of cooking classes in high school. And then when I went to college, uh, I took, I continued to take French classes in college. And my French teacher, who is from Switzerland, said, you absolutely must go study in Paris. You will love it. You will love Paris. I was like, OK. So I studied. I did a semester abroad in Paris. And during that semester abroad, I had a friend say, hey, I'm taking these cooking classes. You want to come and take a cooking class with me? And the study abroad was I was studying at the Sorbonne. So it was I wasn't taking um, cooking classes there. It was just French language, literature, culture, history, stuff like that. And so, um, so we did this Cordon Bleu. It was like, it was like their extension thing. It wasn't, I wasn't in the, like, I wasn't studying the chef chef with the hat and the white thing and the whole deal. I took a couple of classes and it was just so much fun. So it was, it was ladies who are now about my age. And I was like 19, 20 when I was there. So, you know, it was, it was me and a bunch of old ladies. <laughs> um, and you know, my couple of girlfriends and they just taught us to cook. And I mean, I, I remember I came across some of those recipes. I was like, Oh my gosh, this is so cool. And of course they measure everything in liters and milliliters and grams and, you know, just totally different. And between the, the, the three of us who took the class, we were all American students and, uh, they, you know, the classes were all in French. And at that point I had studied French for six years. So I kind of thought I knew what I was doing. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> it was very, it was, uh, it was humbling. It was humbling. So between the three of us, we got all the ingredients down and we would make the food and it was just, it was really fun. And um, so anyway, it was, it was, it, it was, it was, it was fun.
Wow, what a wonderful experience that must have been. Well, your, your recipes are great. I got to tell you, you're delightful. You can come back anytime. Even if you don't have a book, you can make something else. Make date syrup and hot sauce next time. That'll be fun. Hey, listen, I'll come and make date syrup and hot sauce any day for you, Chef AJ. <laughs> Super fun. Yes, yes. He says, you have a great personality. She does. And she looks like three famous actresses all smushed into one. Smushed into one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, so that, well, I wish you every success with the book. We know a lot of people have pre-ordered. It's also available in Kindle, right? Absolutely. In fact, you can buy it today in Kindle and download it to your Kindle today. So it is available Whoa. already oh, in the ebook. Terrific. So if they want to make this recipe, get the Kindle. It's good to know. Get the Kindle. Absolutely. And I will be putting some of these recipes. I'll be making them some of them on my channel. So it's a cooking channel, of course. So come come by and take a look at some of the recipes. I had a little hiatus this summer. We had family visiting from out of town. And so was not very conducive to cooking with the kids and everybody and the dogs, everybody in the background. So, um, but we'll, we'll be getting back to posting more videos regularly. So I'm what's very the name of the about- channel so that I make sure to put it in the show notes. What's the name of the your channel, your cooking channel. Oh, it's uh, plant-based home cooking. So Great. plant-based home good. cooking is the channel. Yep. Wow. And it says do a whole week with, with Alicia, maybe plant-based whole cooking. I'll make sure to put that in the show notes. Great. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And I share wherever I, when I, when I get, you know, people ask all the time, oh, where'd you get your apron or where'd you get your whatever? Yeah. So I, I always have an Amazon link to that kind of stuff. So people can like, you know, yeah. I want the same thing. Great. Go get it. People are loving it. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I love coming on your show. You're no, just you're, so fun. To, no, it's so a great you. Guys, no, really. I, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I endorse this book. There's so many recipes. It's virtually SOS free, except for a couple desserts. And you can always use date syrup instead of maple syrup. And, you know, with, I don't even think there's salt in here. And if there is, I, really, it's always optional, right? Salt so, is listed uh, as an optional ingredient in uh, whenever it is listed. Yeah, no, this is a great book. And I wish you every success. Thanks so much, Felicia. It's Thank you great. so much for having me, Chef AJ. It is my pleasure. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when I have two shows at 11 a.m., Dr. Vivian Chen, and she is fabulous. And at 2 p.m., another cooking demo, this time with Joy Foods. Take care, Felicia, and 